Hi everyone, welcome to Dave Bonsai. On today's episode, PSGF Part 9. It's a chilly Saturday morning. We're only at about 32 degrees and look what's showing up on radar. Yeah, that blue color means snow in our future. They forecast it for the last couple of days. So far so good. The sun is still trying to peek out here out of the southern sky, which has given a little warmth to the PSGF. Uh, but that snow is going to change the look of it around here in a hurry. Now, I've already been outside this morning working on the PSGF. Let's back up a little bit and show you what's been going on. A little earlier this morning, we hit our first official hard freeze of the fall season. We hit about 28 degrees early this morning. And what's been nice about the passive solar green frame so far is that the temperatures in here at night when it gets down to any temperature seems to hold on to 8 to 10 degrees above the outside temperature. So that's with no fans going, that's just the insulation, this building structure as a whole holds about 10 degrees, which is good. Now that'll be Probably not as big when it gets colder because as anything, any house, any cabin, any structure like this, as you lose temperature slowly, it's going to be a lot slower gaining temperature as well. And um, so if you had a really cloudy, cold day with not much sun, the, the temps are going to be really steady and then they might slowly decrease more each night. Um, but I'm feeling good about uh, that 10 degree differential this morning. So it was 28 degrees this morning when I woke up and checked my Govi thermometers. It was 38 in the passive solar green frame. So that means the fan did not kick in. This will only kick in if it hits 32 for the low temperature or right now 80 for the high. Now I might adjust that now in the fall because we don't want temperatures really warm in here. So we might, when it hits 50 in here, turn on this fan as well. So 50 or 32. So we can try to keep the temperature in here right around that 40 degree range. Because the earth down below, five feet below, for those who are new to the program here, we've got a hole that I dug underneath here and about five feet below are all the tubes down there. And that should stay about 40 degrees, 45 degrees. I'm not sure yet. We'll have some uh, uh, probes down there hopefully soon to get some tests throughout the winter. So we're in the passive solar green frame this morning and I'm finishing some uh, bench work. I put stain on the original bench that I put up, but I had some more support boards that I needed to put on. And so I unscrewed the, the boards to uh, make sure I could get some stain on these when it warms up. Now it's not even warm enough to stain in here, but with just a little bit of sunshine out here today through some clouds before the snow comes today, we're starting to warm up in here. We're already at 43 degrees inside the PSGF. So as soon as we hit the 50 mark this afternoon, I might be able to put a coat of stain on these new boards that I put in. So I went ahead and did some measurements and got a really nice sturdy structure on this side of the passive solar green frame shelf system because this is going to be the side now that I'll be doing most of my filming when I film a tree in here because I've now spray painted that gray back here. Now I might go black because black or white seems to be the best for a background for filming trees. Dark gray right now will be suitable for now. Again, it's too cold to do any painting in here until it warms up. And uh, I haven't done the hole inside yet, but I got these two panels so I can start filming right away. We had some people talk about when I filmed right here, the, the light back here and the sun and the windows, it was hard to see. We got some backlighting so you get some dark images. My apologies for that. Thanks for your patience. From now on, we'll be filming right here. So as I mentioned, I'm putting my shelves in and the last piece here, these were four by eight pieces. Um, they're about a half inch thick, four by eight. And so I able to put two four footers in here and then I cut a piece to fit uh, perfectly in the middle. And again, a lot of cross beams because this plastic, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be bendable. And so if I have really heavy pots on here, I need those supports about every six to 12 inches. So here I have them every six inches. Cause again, I'll be working a lot with big pots, little pots, all kinds of pots working on here. Um, and it's also a corner juncture from where this post is here. I put some extra support here, but here I cut this piece out now and we're gonna put that uh, right about here. There we go. 
And so that com completes the uh, L shape of the uh, plastic uh, greenhouse bench tops. And so I can do a lot of work right here now. And I'll be able to get, this is about two feet in length and, and two feet in length here, depth rather of the shelves. So I can get a pretty big tree in here. And of course, from here to the top, we have a good three to four feet for my bigger trees. Uh, we just have to be careful when we hit closer to the window there. So I'm not gonna put these in today because again, I wanna stain these with the uh, uh, waterproof staining. And uh, so we'll stain all these boards here, but now we have a nice, uh, Nice shelf system where I can do a lot of work and we can get a lot of trees here. I wanted to mention a Blue Eddy again. This is my power source that has never gone completely drained. Right now you can see on the display that we have 27% of the battery life left. Now we've had a full week of gray and rain, so I've had very little power coming in. And right now with an overcast sky, the sun is trying to peek through a little bit. We have 14 on now 13 whole watts there trying to put energy in. But I've turned the AC power off, so it's not draining anything right now. So that 27%, even at 15 watts right now, should probably go up to 30 in the next half an hour or so. Nothing major. But if I get one sunny day, that sun from start to finish, I should probably get that pretty close to 75, 80%, and then another day would put it back up to 100%. So I need about two days, I've discovered, to get this back to 100%. Now, right now, the Blue Eddy is housed right below uh, where the fan system comes out of the ground and right below the L of my desk there. So I'm doing a lot of work here. And of course, as I work here, I might be watering some things in there as well, and I don't want water to get down there. So we are going to go ahead and make uh, an encapsuled uh, cabinetry system down in here, at least to the left probably this side over here, and we'll turn this Blue Eddy this way and tuck it in there. And that'll be an enclosed area right there. Not underneath here so much, but just so it covers up the tube and has enough room for the Blue Eddy to be in there, insulated, all the cords uh, easily accessible, and we'll be creating that later on this fall and early winter on those days when it's warm enough in here to work. I'm really pleased with how the bench system worked out. Um, if you recall, I was putting some cement into the tubes here, and I got the footings at about 36 inches high, maybe closer to 32, and they are on top of the uh, four inch thick or three and a half inch thick. I made a two by four frame where I've got this 18 by 18 inch uh, base down here. And this cement with the tubing stuck to this uh, um, foundation piece, and they're buried now in the rock, so you can't see the foundation piece. But we're looking at having some thermal mass in the solar, uh, passive solar green frame. So in order for this to hold enough heat through the cold winter months uh, at nighttime, we're hoping that these guys really warm up in the daytime. I might even paint them black yet, but right now they're a dark gray to fit with the uh, color of the whole scheme. But if we get these black, they'll even uh, get some more heat. And then in the overnight hours, they will slowly re release some heat. And again, maybe make me have to use energy one less hour in the night. And if one less hour of energy means that I can keep my um, power energy uh, pack all uh, juiced up for the really cold days, that's gonna help. So every, every half an hour, every 15 minutes, every hour is always gonna help. So I made these about 32 inches high or so. And uh, so they're nice and heavy and sturdy and are gonna create some thermal mass. So with the extra cement that I had and the extra tubing that I had, I thought, well, hey, let's utilize this for some more thermal mass in the uh, passive solar green frame. So I made a couple of round posts that can be hopefully some bonsai uh, holders if I need to. So here's a tree in here. I got some trees right now on this uh, makeshift bench that uh, may stay here uh, long term or at least this uh, winter season anyway. But there we go. I can put this on here. I can have different heights to work on perhaps. So there we go. We have the two cement very sturdy benches that can house maybe this guy and I can have a higher presentation of a tree or a lower presentation of a tree uh, based on whatever my needs are. Just like that. So there is the top half of the air layer of the Japanese maple I did later uh, late summer. So a few months ago, still looking really well. It's taken hold, I think. The roots are doing pretty good because we have a good, healthy tree. So maybe I can keep that on that little pedestal for the rest of the time this winter in here. So either or, I'm going to get thermal mass out of here and possibly some places to put my trees.
I'm not sure what I'm going to put in here, but I have this structure here that holds up the fan system. So I made a little box on here so I can store some stuff in there. You can never have too much storage. If you're a George Carlin fan from back in the day, yeah, I got a place for all my stuff. I'm at the stage with the passive solar green frame where I've got a lot of piddly stuff to do. Uh, from a little bit of shelf decisions to make, some things to hang things in here. I've got to figure out some lights if I'm going to work in here in the fall and winter because, you know, it's going to be dark by 5 o'clock pretty soon. Daylight savings around the corner um, if it hasn't happened already by the time I release this video. And... Uh, but I was shopping at one of my big box stores uh, to get some supplies recently, and all of a sudden I saw a big old, uh, like an end cap with these uh, really cute, about 10-gallon um, black um, trash cans or garbage cans or, you know, whatever, refuse, whatever you're going to put in here. And so I thought, hey, one of the other things that we want in a passive solar green frame or even our cold frames for bonsai storage in the wintertime is if you have a lot of water in your um, area where you keep your trees, if you're keeping it at about 35 to 40 degrees, you know, this water will also be something that holds on to some heat. There'll be some thermal mass with water. Now, water is one of the best conductors of this thermal mass heat, right? So it'll uh, warm up and it'll slowly release into your uh, space. And so a lot of people put these great big drums, like 50-gallon drums, um, bigger than these, um, and they'll put them on the back north wall, and they're usually black. And so all the water in there warms up in the daytime, and then it slowly releases at night. So that's what I have my cement pillars for. But hey, I've got a 10-gallon uh, tub of water here. Won't take up too much room in my smaller passive solar green frame. Now, if I had a bigger one, I'd probably get a 55-gallon drum and fill that up with rainwater. But I just finished uh, taking out all the water of my current rain barrel underneath my deck. And I put it into a whole bunch of barrels for inside the plant room and inside here for the passive solar green frame. So now I have my water... Yeah, in here that I can go ahead and water the plants. and It'll be at quote unquote room temperature, which right now is probably in that 40 degree range. So it's pretty cold. So I've got some water that'll hold down a little bit of heat. And of course, I can use it for uh, the plants. Now, this won't last very long, so I have to keep it filled up. But I can also let water sit in here from the tap if I need to. Um, and then when it slowly settles, I can get rid of some of that hardness by letting it settle for a couple of days. Then I come out here and I water, which again, in my green frames, typically in the wintertime, um, I'm usually, my cold frames rather, I'm watering once a week, maybe once every two weeks. So the water will last a fair amount of time. So I've got a little bit of water here for a couple of different purposes. So here's one of those little tedious things that I haven't finished yet that are all part of the PSGF. So up on the window sections here, I've got these two high windows that provide some ventilation. But because the roof is at such an angle and I didn't make the uh, PSGF wide enough here, we've got a really tight angle up here. So if I'm ever going to be able to work on any windows, if I have window repair, leaks, problems, replacement, I really can't get up there because this wall would cut over uh, two-thirds of the window completely out of access. So this is just the top OSB board. Now I will put some uh, pink insulation up on both of these to keep the uh, heat in in the wintertime. Um, and I'll paint, spray paint them gray so you'll hardly know they're there. And plus no one just stares at the ceiling in here. Well, unless you're, you know, laying on the floor. Uh, so I'm putting these last final trim pieces around this little concave section here. So I got the bottom one here now. Time to do some measuring, cutting, and pounding at the most awkward angles you can imagine. Eight and a quarter. Eight and a half. Always a little proud and I can always trim it down. Now I'd like to say that I'm that good and that was one measure, one cut and we're good. But I already went back up there and trimmed it one more time. I get my steps in though. And there we have it. The pink stuff, kind of loosely cut, kind of stays up there in place. We'll spray paint it gray and it just easily comes out. Okay.
All right, this next one should be our next easy one. Then we probably have to do some thinking. Now, I was going to work on the roof with my son, Toby, but it was too windy on the day we were going to work, so we had to postpone. The next time he was going to come over, he couldn't come over. But it was rain in the future and a lot of rain, and so I thought I would tackle it by myself. Now, the roof panels are only about five feet in length, not eight, so they're manageable pieces one at a time with gloves, and so I tackled putting the roof on all by myself. It's just before four o'clock on October the 22nd. And I believe the outside is this close to completion. I measured out and cut all the tin for the roof and the edge pieces. Got the first stage on a couple days ago. Today I got the roof on and just finished the trim there. Up and down the ladder. There's some warbles in it. In the back, there's a little overlapping in the middle that doesn't look as pretty, but it is the back. It overhangs about an inch. I've got a board there that I'm going to have to uh, stain on the end, on both ends, and then put some caulk in there so the rain doesn't get blown in there. And we are good to go. The windows can still open. The solar panel can lift up without anything in its way. I can reinstall it. I still can get a drill in there to take it out if I need to. I didn't think this big top piece was going to work. But we have our kind of improvised roof. I made a whole bunch of little triangular pieces. I just cut a 45 degree angle on both, cut the edges off, and put 12 of them up there to, to bend that top piece right over and just overlapped them because I had two 10-footers. So I'll paint and caulk, and the outside is done. On the 22nd of October, I was hoping to be done November 1st. This is so exciting. My goal was to finish by November 1st. Now, let me back up. What do I mean by finish? So by finish, I wanted to make sure that the outside of the PSGF, the passive solar green frame, was all secure. And so let's give you a tour of the outside of the passive solar green frame to see if I've reached my goal of being secure and finished on the outside by November 1st. By the way, I stand here on the 28th of November. We have the front of the PSGF. We've got the windows in place. The siding is all done. The solar array, well, one panel is up there, and we have the two vent windows left and right that open up when it gets 75 degrees or warmer on the inside. The front of the PSGF, check. The west-facing wall, we've got the door. We've got a little light up there just outside the door, solar powered, so I can see where I'm going at night. Window down below, the vent up on top. And the side of the roof up there, that's all metal and complete. The west side of the PSGF, check. The east side of the PSGF, the window down below secure, the siding's been on there for a while, the vent up top, and yes, we have some metal siding up top as well for the fascia and soffit. The east side of the PSGF, check. The north side of the PSGF, we've got our metal siding all connected. We have the roof of the PSGF, all secured with the trim on the side and underneath the fascia and soffit. The north side of the PSGF, check. The PSGF has come together quite nicely and before November 1st.
I stand with my wide angle lens in the back northwest corner of the PSGF just inside the doorway. So here's our benches, a couple extra pieces right there, and it goes all the way down the length of the PSGF. Now that's a two foot wide bench. So I'll get a lot of higher plants here and the smaller plants in the back and I should be able to fit a lot. I do anticipate having a shelf up here someday hanging from this center post right here. We'll be able to get trees at this level as well. Try to utilize as much space as possible. Now in the winter time for a cold frame, that'll be the warmest part of the PSGF so that probably won't be likely. I'll probably have most of my things down below. Which, speaking of down below, there's the big one. The big one is sitting there by the outtake fan. That's where the uh, air is coming in. Uh, from uh, underneath the ground. So I have some trees already that are sitting underneath the benches right there. And you can see I still have to do some staining on that bare wood. We want everything to be gray and stained in here. Um, so we're getting as much life out of this as possible. The pillars right there, we talked about that. We got the pillars that are supporting the big benches, big strong pillars. And of course that again is gonna be thermal mass. Gonna radiate slow but sure heat just a little bit to hopefully use as little bit of energy as possible from the sun and the blue eddy over there in the corner. So there's the blue eddy power source. This is just a temporary shelf right now. It's been holding my tools and stuff. This will probably stay in here all winter long. One of the things I wanna do is try to keep this as neat and organized as possible because as we've always said, if you uh, can't get at things and things are hard to take care of, well, it's hard to take care of and you make mistakes. In the back part of the PSGF, there is the water right there. Just the 10 gallon drum right there for some water here at all times. And then we have our intake system. So this exhaust system, we've got the fans that kick on right there. That is a fan that sucks in the air from the hot part of the PSGF during the summer days and more importantly, the real hot winter days when we don't want it to get too hot in here. So that's gonna suck in the air. It goes down underground, goes in the underground tubes and again comes up right there where we get that air. So on a really cold winter day, when it's 20 outside, we can get 40 degree air out of that and warm things up in here if we need to. So I stand in the PSGF incredibly excited about the potential of what is to come in here. We've got a lot of testing to do. So I gotta see when it gets really cold, what's gonna happen. So right now, we are at about 32 degrees still. Maybe it's inch to 34. I have to check my weather app. The sun is still trying to get some uh, energy into the solar panel there and warm it up in here. Right now it's 33 degrees outside. So we did warm up to 33 degrees. The temperature in here though, according to my thermometers, is going to be a magical 46 degrees. So we've managed to uh, warm up to 46 degrees. When that sun did come out a little bit more through some of the thin clouds, you could already feel the heat on the face in here. It's gonna warm it up into 50 here, no trouble at all, when it's only 30s outside. So the big challenge is gonna be, when it gets into 40 degree full sunshiny day, will it be 80 degrees in here? It might be up here, but maybe not downhill here. So we'll have to make sure our exhaust fans are working and that fan is working because if it's too hot in here, I want the lower colder air to come in. And so we'll check that out. So 48 degrees according to the thermometers here in the room, 46 on that one, 48 on the one that's hanging right by the window you can't see there. Things are looking really good in the PSGF. Our now, um, our, our data, our research has to be how warm and cold we can keep this thing all winter long. Because again, this is a greenhouse, but a cold frame. And my concern is, are the windows too big? Is it gonna get just too hot in here in the winter time? In the summer, it'll be tropical plants or little plants at all, because I'll have my garden full of stuff. It's the winter months that I'm concerned about. And I'm also thinking about the shoulder seasons. So when it comes springtime, things will start to wake up earlier in here than of course outside in the buried in the snow. So I'll be able to wake some things up and have a longer growing season for some of the trees. And then in the fall, like right now, if it's 40 degrees outside for the next couple of weeks of November, we have a nice November, it's gonna be warm in here and the plants will slowly, slowly go down into um, their dormancy stage. Now it's always gonna be colder at the bottom of the cold frame, always gonna be warmer up here. So what I need to stay cold and dormant will always stay on the bottom. And the ones that are not quite as uh, having to go as full dormant for as long, I could put maybe some Chinese elms in here because I keep them in a cold frame now, but some people bring those indoors. I can keep those up here. So if they're a little bit warmer, they're not gonna be maybe suffering as much as the trees that need to go into full dormancy. The other thing about dormancy is we only need about what, eight, 12, maybe 16 weeks of dormancy, but can we get away with eight and 12? So if I get all of December and January, or just January, February, where they're really cold dormancy, 
that slow track down over November, December will get them to dormancy. They won't be pushing out a lot of growth or anything, but they'll still be active for a little while longer. How will that react? How will my bones eye react to that is the question. So we're going to have all that research. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with all my trees. And uh, I've got my other cold frames just in case this year uh, for client trees, for my trees that I'm you know, a little concerned about. We'll make sure that we're not killing off a whole bunch of trees in the experimental year. But here we are inside on a relatively cold day in October still, 33 degrees with the snow on the way. But it's cozy in here. I don't need gloves to work. I've got my vest on. It's chilly out there, but there's no wind in here. Things feel awfully, awfully good. So the PSGF is looking really good. This will bring a close to part nine. Really from here on out now, it'll just be kind of little, uh, again, nitpicky things here and there that I do with the cold frame. I'm going to spray paint the uh, um, tops up here where I have those... Uh, pink insulation pieces. I'm eventually going to spray paint some of these walls. If it gets warm enough this fall, maybe we'll do the east wall. We'll do the tops and the corners, and then this wall might have to wait. But we'll get a lot of uh, reflected uh, light this winter. Uh, not that I'm concerned about that. I just won't be able to spray paint if it's too cold in here. And so, little nitpicky things. We'll secure these after we stain the, the bench pieces here, this wood here. We'll stain it all, secure the benches, and then organize. Make it as organized as possible. So that's it for number nine. We're going to wrap this up right here. Kind of short and sweet and just a finale. I finished it by November 1st. At least my goal for where I wanted to be by November 1st. We'll have other shelves and all the other nitpicky things and small things as we move into this fall, uh, into early winter. And then next season, we'll pretty it up even more uh, on those uh, paint things and all the other little nooks and crannies that I want to work on. It's great to be out here. <laughs> Fantastic. So until the next tree that we work on well, in here or in the plant uh, room down in the house, uh, that's going to do it for the nine part series of the PSGF. Keep posted though. We'll have all kinds of update on the bonsai journey, including what's happening in here with all the updates on the data within our shows in the future. So, hey, thanks for watching. I will have a from start to finish summary of the whole project coming out soon, too. So stick around for that. In the meantime, as always, everyone, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll catch you on the next one.